Hello, I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. I serve in the United States Congress as a Democratic Congressional member. I represent the 18th Congressional District in Houston, Texas. You may have heard of my predecessor, one of them, the Honorable Barbara Jordan, a mentor, and I'm glad to have been a mentee. I'm delighted to serve as a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee, Budget Committee, Homeland Security Committee, part of the leadership as a Chief Deputy Whip, and as well, a member of the powerful Steering and Policy Committee. I'm excited to be part of the Democratic Women's Club of Florida 64th Annual Convention and the National Federation of Democratic Women Southern Division Conference. Congratulations on your conference. And as well, I wanna congratulate all of your Democratic congressional delegation in Florida. They are an outstanding delegation and particularly the women who are elected to the United States Congress as Democratic members of the United States Congress. They're doing a dynamic and exciting job representing you in areas of security, uh, climate, and certainly education. I know that this is a very crucial year. Congratulations to the Democrats who voted strongly for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Isn't it exciting to have a working man president in Joe Biden and as well a woman of color who represents the African-American community and the Southeast Asian community. That is an example of the many members in this club who are immigrant, who are women of color, uh, who are in many phases of professions. That is why this message that I offer to you very briefly today is to be able to say the power of women are change agents and mountain shakers. That is what we need to see the rising vote of women and to realize the very year that you're holding this convention, it is the hundredth year of the right to vote by women who gained the right to vote finally in 1920, working with the suffragettes who refused to accept their second-class status, wearing white in the streets, being disrespected and ignored, sometimes brutalized, but they never gave up. They never gave in and they never gave out. And so Democratic women, individually strong and collectively powerful, that is a message that you should carry forth as we seek to lead uh, in this government. I look forward to many women being represented in the Biden-Harris administration. Before we get there, I think it is extremely important for Democratic women to raise their voices about the process of democracy. Raise your voices against the uh, ludicrous behavior uh, that includes ignoring the victory of uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris, of refusing to concede, of calling for frivolous vote recounts, and going into courts with non-basic legal arguments. We have just heard that the Department of Homeland Security has called this the most secure election ever in the history of the United States. In addition, with a thanks to the American people, no matter whether they voted for Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or not, that they voted and this was the largest election in the history of the United States of America, over 150 million votes, with some 77 million for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. You are part of that. But now it's time to move toward governing. It's time for you to raise your voices. Yes, let me be very clear. As I've called them frivolous vote recounts, I do believe there is a legal right for an opponent or someone who has lost to have those recounts. I will say that. But as those recounts are proceeding, and most statisticians will say that it'll be impossible to overcome uh, the lead that President Biden has and Kamala Harris has, then it is appropriate in the peaceful transition of government and transfer of government that the losing candidate, the existing and sitting president, speaks his piece of concession and conciliatory remarks to bring our nation together. Women, your strength can be part of the voice to say heal our nation, unify our nation. Your strength, individually strong and collectively powerful, can cry out to the leaders in government, Republicans, and ask them to stand not on politics, but with the American people. Stand with the American people, stand with women who are now concerned about bread and butter issues, concerned about the education of their children, concerned about a right kind of climate, concerned about international peace and the rights of women. I'm reminded of the words of Secretary Hillary Clinton, then First Lady, who ran a dynamic race, who was subjected to Russian box and 
interference and undermining of her campaign, but still stood strong and created the breaking of the glass ceiling. She said, women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. And so today as you convene, I hope you'll be reminded of your strength, your collective power, that you'll stand up for democracy, you'll hold the constitution in your hand, and you will say that there must be under the great nation that was created with the words we have come together to create a more perfect union, that the transition of power comes peacefully and that your voices be raised, not for self, but for democracy. You recognize that women's rights are human rights, but you also recognize the power of women who can help again be the tree shakers and the change agents for a country that is great on its own basis of adhering to democracy, justice, freedom, and equality. Enjoy your conference, enjoy the understanding of your role and your power, and lead, lead us toward a firm democracy, a healed nation, and a nation of unity. God bless all of you. God bless your great club, and God bless the United States of America.